After creating software testing videos for over 10 years, I realized I never defined what is automation testing. So let's go over the basics to set you on your way for what I like to call automation awesomeness. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel by smashing the bell down below to get alerted every time I release a new test automation video. Automation testing refers to taking a repeatable manual process performed by a developer or tester and leveraging a tool to automate that process. So automation helps to accelerate running through numerous test scenarios to check the results produced by a specific action or lines of code matches the expected results. If not, it raises an exception and lets you know if something went wrong. So from a developer's perspective, they usually use like an X unit type testing tool like J unit or N unit that they will use to test their code to verify that the results produced by their code is what they expected. Automated unit tests act like a kind of safety net to give a developer some level of confidence that their code change that they merged in the main branch isn't going to break anything, it's not going to break the build, and introduce a new bug to the code base. I think this is essential because developers should be loving automated tests because this safety net really empowers them to be able to touch code that maybe that they didn't create to uh, make modifications and any type of change by knowing that they have a nice set of tests that actually could test or catch any particular bugs that they may have introduced before they actually merge up. So automated tests from a developer's perspective is really critical to give them this type of security and knowing that any change they make does have a set of tests that can catch anything that they may introduce unknowingly. From a tester's perspective, we typically create an automated regression test uh, using tools like Selenium that run when a developer checks in code to verify that their code change doesn't impact other features in our existing application or our existing code base. So automated scripts are typically added to our CI CD pipelines to run on every developer check-in. This helps to find newly introduced bugs quickly so that we don't wait days or weeks or even months to learn that a code change introduced an issue. Once again, this is really critical to get this feedback to the developer as quickly as possible while the change that they made that they checked in is fresh in their mind so they don't have to go back in time and say, okay, what did I do? Why did I do that? Especially as teams try to shift left and produce software faster and faster to get in the hands of their customers. We really need a strong set of automated test suites that run automatically on every check-in to catch these type of issues. And of course, obviously having automated tests is critical because it speeds up the time to test. Since we're using a scripted process that evaluates if the software developed actually meets our requirements. We call this automated testing because you can easily use your computer to rapidly run through tons of test case test scenarios in minutes. So in the old days or before, a lot of these processes were done manually and you'll still need to do manual testing, but manual testing slows down the process, especially as we try to do CI CD, continuous delivery, uh, you cannot do continuous delivery without having automated testing as part of your testing strategy. And obviously, and as I mentioned, automated testing could save you a lot of time since you don't have to perform these tasks repeatedly after changing your application under test. The other benefit, of course, for test automation that gives you a level of confidence that before we ship the application to our users, we've identified critical bugs before our customers do and our software is stable. And we all know there's nothing worse than buggy software. It turns off our existing customers and makes it really hard to attract new customers. It also creates a lot of technical debt that takes away from working on new features that is critical to get more customers or to help existing customers with our software. And let's face it, the biggest concern is that in this age of rapid development, quality software is a competitive edge. If you fall behind, you're going to lose customers and customers nowadays have a bunch of different choices that allows them to move quickly over to a more stable software of your competitors. This is bad not only for the company, but it's also bad for you. And let me tell you why. I've been in this industry for over 20 years and trust me, anytime a company loses money, it always leads to some cost cutting measure. The biggest being layoffs. So not having quality software could actually lead to losing your job. And honestly, this can happen to anyone. No one is secure in their job. I actually was laid off a year ago from my job. The whole department I found out was let go. And the reason why is the software we were delivering to our customers didn't meet the expectations of our customers. We lost one of our biggest clients. We weren't getting market share. 
And eventually they just decided to scrap the whole project. So not having quality software, not meeting the demands of your customers and their expectations will lead you to losing your job. So it's not just about running tests for the sake of test. It's actually creating a quality product that your customers and your company could be proud of. And I'm not saying that automated testing is a silver bullet and it's gonna cure all your quality software problems. It's not, it's one piece, one small component of a full quality software plan. Now you can't build quality into an application just like you can't build testability into an application that wasn't built to be testable. So many things beyond just automated testing goes into creating a quality product from gathering good requirements, understanding the needs of your customers, uh, good documentation, all these types of things go into meeting the demands of your customers to make sure you're building a quality piece of software that everyone is going to be happy with. But when developers are thinking about quality before they write a line of code and embrace a test first type of approach, the likelihood of creating better quality software dramatically increases. So that's why automated unit tests is so critical. Also for testers and support to expand your skills and ideas of what automated testing is. Automation testing is not just browser based end to end testing. Having thousands of Selenium end to end tests does not equal quality. In fact, I recently interviewed the creator of Selenium WebDriver, Simon Stewart, and he says this all the time, having thousands of Selenium automated tests probably is an indicator you're doing automation wrong. Uh, the best piece of advice I can give about automation efforts is to remember the test pyramid. If you have a lot of small tests and a few integration tests and maybe like one or two Selenium tests, end-to-end -to -end tests, you're doing it right. If you have thousands of end-to-end -to -end tests, possibly using Selenium and five unit tests, small tests, then you're in a whole world of pain. Um, and it's been true since before I started Selenium and it's true to this day. Automated testing should start with the majority of your tests being unit level tests. If it can't be tested at the unit level, then move to more of an integrated type test using API type testing approaches. API tests run faster and tend to be more reliable, less flaky than UI tests in my experience. And you should only have a small number of actual end-to-end -end UI automated tests. This really aligns with Michael Cohen's famous automation pyramid. Now I know a lot of people go overboard with the automation pyramid. It's just a rule of thumb. Of course, your company has different needs than other companies, but in general, a majority of your tests should be at the unit level, about 70% of your test. 20% of your tests should be more API integration tests. And then only 10%, the smallest part of the pyramid, should be dedicated to automated UI tests. You should try to have as few automated end-to-end -end tests as possible and focus more on what I call atomic or small tests that just validate a small piece of functionality against your application. I'll cover atomic test in a future video. Also, don't forget automation test is not just for functional testing. I think a lot of companies, a lot of teams are missing out on the benefits of automation because they're not applying it to other, maybe non-functional type of tests that can help you create quicker, faster quality software. Uh, helping you automate your, your builds, your environments is critical. You can use automation for that. Also, automation testing could be applied to security testing, accessibility testing, database testing, and performance testing, and more. These are all types of things I cover in this channel. So as I mentioned earlier, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the bell, subscribe today to make sure you don't miss any videos I release on any of these topics to help you succeed with your automation testing effort. So in a nutshell, automation testing is a technique used to improve your execution speed of verification checks or any other repeatable task in your software development lifecycle. Hope this helps and make sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment, let me know what other videos you'd like to see around automation testing in general. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.